Okay, so now we'll come back. Now about velocity, basically we have already talked about the velocity and what velocity is, um, meaning that as long as you understood in the in the in the previous video or the, essentially the video before the previous video that we were talking about basically a um, essentially a function something like this this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis and we have for example some function like this and uh, um, and then basically you have some point a over here and let's call this f you have some point a over here and this this point over the, the coordinates of this point would be a comma f of a for example and uh, there is also this point over here, for example, let's call it x, and this point would be x comma f of x, for example. And then there is basically a, um, there is basically a, you can draw a line between these two points, right? Now you can imagine that this axis, you can imagine that this axis represents time, right? And imagine that this axis represents the position of an object moving, for example, along a straight line, for example, something like this. Now, at this point in time, when, when, when x is equal to a, the object is over here. At this point in time, the object is over here, meaning that as time goes by, the object is, the, essentially, the position of the object is increasing right so this way essentially um, essentially what what this what this line essentially what the what the slope of this now let's let's see essentially what the slope of this line actually represents in this particular situation so in this particular situation what happens is that the slope of this line you can calculate it essentially this this point over here is f of x this point over here is f of a and so basically you have um, essentially you, you, you rise from f of a to f of x which means that this distance would be f of x minus f of a this is your rise and the amount of run that you have is this distance which is x minus a right this is the slope of this line right now in the basically in this particular situation the position of the object changed from f of a to f of x right which means that basically this is the this we can we can essentially this distance we can interpret it as the distance as the distance covered as the distance covered by the object and in the exact same way this is essentially this 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 amount of time we can inter interpret it as the time basically time required time required to cover the distance to cover the distance right which means that basically f of x minus f of a is is nothing but basically the distance covered distance covered over basically over over basically the time over time elapsed now keep this in mind now if i go over here and say that if i ask you what was your you were driving the car or something like that and if I asked you basically what was your velocity or what was your speed, you would say on average I was doing 25 kilometers per hour. You would say I was doing 25 kilometers per hour or I was doing, for example, 75 kilometers per hour. So what this means is that basically I was doing 75 kilometers per one hour, meaning that every every in 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 one hour I was on average I was 
covering a distance of 75 kilometers. So this is essentially velocity. This is a velocity or speed, you could say. Of course, there is difference between velocity and speed, but for our purposes right now, we can use them interchangeably without, um, without any problems, okay? So, so, so essentially you can see that velocity is basically some distance divided by some, um, some essentially some interval of time, right? And we, we have essentially the same, the exact same thing over here, which means that basically over here I have some cover distance over basically the elapsed time to cover that distance, right? And that is essentially the slope of this line over here. That is the slope of this line over here. Which means that, which means that this is nothing but meaning that, and this is the slope of this line, which means that the slope of the line, the slope of the line, the slope of the secant line, is equal to average velocity, right? The yes, slope of this line is, equal, is is essentially is nothing but average velocity. So the exact same problem that we solved before, which was essentially how to calculate the slope of the secant line. So the slope of the secant line is actually not could be interpreted as average velocity if essentially if the y-axis represents position and if the x-axis represents time right and now suppose that basically now since this is average velocity now suppose that basically i want to, to calculate for example instantaneous velocity so then instantaneous velocity would be the slope of this line over here which is tangent to the graph of the function at this point right so then what 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 do i need to do in order to calculate this instantaneous velocity I take the exact same thing, meaning that f of x minus f of a over basically x minus a, and then I, as I, as we did before, I take the limit of this as x approaches a, because, because essentially as x approaches a, the slope of this line is going to get closer and closer to the slope of this line until eventually we will get to the slope of this, exact slope of this line. So I take the limit of this as x approaches a. So this would be then nothing but instantaneous velocity, instantaneous, instantaneous velocity at basically x is equal to a, right? Now, we saw before that we saw before that that basically that um, this expression over here could be written as instead of f of x minus f of a over um, f of um, f of a minus f of x excuse me f of x minus f of a over uh, x minus a we could we, we saw that we could write basic the f of basic the a plus h minus f of a over basic the h we saw that we could write this this way right and so now what i'm going to do in order to so that so then again this would represent basic the average velocity average velocity right so then basically how do i how do i calculate instantaneous velocity based on this what i'm going to do is is that i'm going to write the same thing as f of basic a plus h minus f of a over basic the h and take the limit of this as h approaches zero this becomes instantaneous 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 velocity right so these are essentially all the exact same things 
but uh, basically represented in different ways, right? Now, let's take a look at a couple of examples or just one example. Let's say that basically you have, if you remember in the one of the previous courses, we had a um, ball being dropped from the top of the TN tower in, I suppose the tower was somewhere in Canada. It was 400, about 450 meters above the, the above essentially above the surface of the earth um, so so essentially a ball is dropped from the upper observation deck of the CN tower 450 meters above the ground right so a ball is dropped from so example number example number three so you have a ball is dropped from is dropped from the from the upper observation deck the upper observation observation deck of the of the CN tower of the CN tower 450 meters above the ground above the ground you want to know essentially what is the velocity of the ball what is the velocity of of the ball after five seconds and you want to know how fast is the ball traveling How fast is the ball traveling when it hits the ground? When it hits the, the ground, right? Now, um, to solve this problem, so of course you need to of course you need to have some sort of relationship for this motion and the relationship is basically it was given essentially in that in that problem the relationship was um, basically s is equal to s is equal to f of t is equal to 4.9 times t squared S essentially is the position of the ball and uh, basically this is a function of t and uh, it's equal to 4.9 times t squared right So let me take a look at this problem myself. I don't understand what this exactly means. Okay, so now the reason why I said that I didn't understand this function is that technically this function should be written as s is equal to, for example, f of t is equal to negative 4.9t squared. If you write it this way, it's going to be essentially a function uh, I suppose a function like this which again it's not going to, to do the job but then the function would be essentially decreasing right which means that basically as time goes by the the, the position is is decreasing not increasing but then if you write it this way, this would be essentially a function like this. And then in the case of this function, if you don't consider basically this part because time cannot be negative, uh, 
then basically what happens is that the function would be meaning that the essentially the position would be increasing and since basically you have essentially a tower over here you have a tower over here which is 450 meters which is 450 meters above the ground right and the, the stone is over here and it's it's dropped down right so the, 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 essentially the 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 um, the um, basically the of course the position would be decreasing but then if you take if you take the position with respect to this point over here of course then you could say that the position is increasing right until it hits over here the ground and then it stops right so that way if you think about it that way then the function makes sense so um, now in order to find uh, in order to find basically the um, so what we want to find over here is that we want to find the velocity of the ball meaning uh, when when we say velocity here we mean instantaneous velocity meaning when we say the velocity of the ball after five seconds that means that we want to find v of five essentially we want to find essentially v of five and uh, v of five means essentially the velocity of the ball at at t is equal to five seconds right um so essentially this is no average velocity this is instantaneous velocity and um, so since you want to find instantaneous velocity you have to to, to use the, the the essentially the 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 the, the formula that we found before which is for example you could call it v of a is equal to for example the limit of for example f of a plus h minus f of a over basic the h as h approaches zero for example something like that right now you want to uh, you want to essentially to find the, the the velocity of the ball after five seconds you also want to find the how fast again means velocity this also means velocity and you also want to find the velocity when it hits the ground and when it hits the ground you can set uh, you can essentially you can use the the function itself to figure out when it's going to hit the ground and that gives you another value for t which means that you want to find the velocity of the function at that point in at, at that point in time as well meaning that yeah, you you would have to find the velocity first for t is equal to 5 and then for t is equal to some t1 for example when it hits the ground whatever so you have to do this calculation twice right so in order to make this easier what you can do is that you can basically find a general basically a general function for the velocity of the of this of this situation for the velocity of this of this of this stone or the ball essentially and then basically uh, substitute that formula with different values of t meaning t is equal to 1 t is equal to 2 t is equal to 3 then you can substitute any value of t into that formula that gives you the velocity at that point in time right now if you didn't understand what i exactly meant i will show you essentially what 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 i mean to say is using essentially i will actually do it so so that you can see essentially what i mean so let's say that i want to find the velocity of this after five seconds meaning that i want to find basically uh, i want to find i want to calculate i want to calculate basically v of five right the the function is s is equal to f of t is equal to 4.9 t squared and um, and a is equal to five so I have to calculate f of basically a plus h. Uh, 
which would be basically f of a is equal to 5 so f of 5 plus h which would be the same thing as basically 4.9 times basically t squared so that would be essentially 5 plus h all the squared right and f of a would be uh, basically f of a would be in this case would be f of 5 and f of 5 is the same thing as uh, is the same thing as 4.9 times basically 5 squared which is 25 right and then basically you have h over here h approaches 0 so you have no problems there so then you could say that basically v of 5 is equal to the limit of basically f of a plus h which is basically um, f of 5 plus h which is 4.9 times basically 5 plus h raised to the second power minus basically f of 5 which is the same thing as 4.9 times basically 25 and then divide this by divide this by h as h approaches 0 right then in this limit basically what you can do is that you can um, take the 4.9 out meaning that you can write this as the limit of basically 4.9 times 5 plus h whole squared minus 25 over h as h approaches 0 right and this would be the same thing as basically the, the 4.9 you can take it out you can write it as 4.9 the limit of basically 5 plus h all the squared minus 25 over h as h approaches 0 this would be the same thing as um, 4.9 times the limit of basically and this would be essentially 5 plus h whole squared is 25 plus h squared plus 10 times h minus 25 over h and 25 25 you can cancel out you can write this as basically h times h plus 10 over h so uh, So then you could write this as basically h times h plus 10 over over h as h approaches 0. And then you can cancel, basically cancel out h and h as, as basically as h is not equal to 0, right? <coughs> so then basically what happens is that as h approaches 0, this becomes essentially just a 10. And so that's 10 times 4.9 is equal to 49. Uh, and the unit would be uh, basically, you can call it, for example, since we, we have taken everything as meters and meters over here and second somewhere, hopefully second over here. So then you can take the, the unit as meters per second, right? And there is a, there is of course, there is of course, I mean, you cannot just simply take the unit as anything that you want. The unit, you have to, essentially, you have to understand why you take the unit the way that you take it. And that is basically based on um, the formula that you use, right? Because the formula that you use is essentially V of A is equal to the limit of basically F of basically A plus H minus F of A over basically H as H approaches zero, right? Um, so you can see that basically that this H over here, this represents essentially some um this represents essentially some essentially some inner wall of time right because essentially in the in the in the formula in, in the in the original basic the shape of this formula we said that basically we, we we used to write this as the limit of basically f of x minus f of a uh, over x minus a as x approaches a right <coughs> 
Now, if I calculate essentially f of x over shear, f of x would be, for example, 4.9 times x squared in this case, right? This would be f of x would be 4.9 times x squared. And of course, the unit for this is in meters, right? f of a would be basically uh, the, the value of the function at some point in time which is again comes out as as meters right and then x minus a the, the unit for this is in seconds the unit for this is in this is in seconds so seconds minus seconds is going to give you second and meter minus meter is going to give you meter so the unit becomes meters per second right so the unit essentially you can take it as meters per second that's the reason why you take the, the, the unit that way now, uh, the rest, essentially, so essentially what we found here is that, is that the unit over shear is, um, is that, is that essentially the velocity of this, the velocity of this, of this, um, ball after, after five seconds is going to be 49 meters per second, right? So I'm going to write over shear v of 5 is equal to 49 meters per per second right now i'm I, i'm going to need to calculate the velocity of this ball also after also at the time when it hits the ground right so let's see how we can do that so when the ball hits the ground S will have become 450 because because we know that essentially that this tower is 450 450 meters above the ground, right? So the value of S will have become 450, right? So which means that basically uh, when the essentially when the ball when the ball essentially hits the ground. When the ball hits the ground, S is equal to 450 meters, which means that, which means that basically based on this formula, we have 450 is equal to 4.9 times T squared, right? Which means that T squared is equal to 450 divided by 4.9, which means that basically T is the same thing as the square root of 400, 450 over 4.9 right so that's that's basically the value of t of course this would be plus or minus the square root of 450 over 4.9 but since time is not negative I'm, go I'm just going to take the positive side of that right so this means that basically when the when the ball essentially hits the ground t is equal to the square root of 450 by Four, by 4.9 right so again I have to go through the exact same process that I that I went through before meaning that I, I need to now calculate essentially V of basically the square root of 450 by 4.9 and to calculate that I need to calculate F of for example um, F of um, a plus h which is um, uh, the square root of basically 450 by 4.9 plus h right and uh, then I need to calculate basically the um, the um, I need to calculate also the f of basically f of essentially the square root of 450 divided by 4.9 and put everything in this in this in this formula right so let's see what what we get over here so for example if you want to calculate this then basically f of basically the square root of 450 divided by 4.9 um, plus h would be the same thing as 4.9 times basically t squared which is the square root of um, 
the square root of 450 divided by 4.9 plus plus h whole squared right so that would be essentially one part so this would be basically 4.9 times basically the square root of 450 divided by 4.9 uh, plus h all squared right and f of basically f of the square root of 450 by 4.9 would be the same thing as basically again 4.9 times the square root of 450 divided by 4.9 all squared all squared which would be the same thing as basically 4.9 and this raised to the second power becomes 450 divided by 4.9 and then cancel these out is equal to 450 right so this is equal to 450 now once you have calculated and you can see how much calculation goes into a simple problem and for the same reason i wanted to find a general function to so that i could do essentially both of these calculation um, uh, essentially in one step meaning that i could calculate both of them essentially only once so now the essentially v of the square root of 450 over 4.9 would be essentially would be essentially the limit of uh, f of a plus h which is 4.9 times the square root of basically 450 divided by 4.9 uh, plus h all squared uh, minus f of a which is minus 450 there's so I suppose there is minus 450 divided by h as h approaches zero right now if I basically when I if I calculate this this gives me basically the limit of basically 4.9 and this becomes essentially this raised to the second power becomes basically 450 divided by 4.9 plus h squared plus 2 times square root of 450 divided by 4.9 times h minus 450 and then divide that by h as h approaches zero so this is the same thing as this is the same thing as the limit of then you have to essentially multiply these in so you have this times this is, becomes essentially 450 plus h squared uh, plus basically 4.9 times this would be 4.9 h squared plus 2 times 2 times 4.9 times the square root of 450 divided by 4.9 times h and you have negative 450 divided by h as h approaches 0 and then you can cancel these two out then from this basically you can take an h out from the numerator you can write it as the limit as h approaches zero of h times basically 4.9 times h plus 2 times 4.9 times the square root of 450 divided by 4.9 uh, and that's that's all about that divided by h so then you can cancel these two out as h approaches zero this goes to zero which means that this becomes two times 4.9 times the square root of 450 divided by 4.9 right which is the same thing as 
which should be basically 2 times 4.9 times the square root of the square root of 450 divided by 4.9 and that's 48 Oh, that's two times. That's just supposed to be two times. That's 94, essentially. That's very close to 94. So you can call this basically 94 meters per second, right? So when then essentially V of, v of ground, you can call it basically 94 meters per second, right? So you see how much calculate I, I didn't really want to do this calculation I just wanted to show you that it would take essentially um, meaning that when you want to know what is the velocity of the ball at t is equal to 1 you have to do this calculation essentially once again when you want to know what is the velocity of the ball at t is equal to 2 you have to do the calculation one more time when you want to know what is the velocity of the ball at t is equal to 3, do the calculation one more time. So that's going to take a whole lifetime to know. Uh, basically, to if, if you wanted to, to know, for example, the, 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 the instantaneous velocity of the ball at 100 points in time, for example. So it, it's, it would take a long, long time to do this. <coughs> of course, there is solutions for this problem meaning that basically once once we get a little bit further into the derivative we will essentially find ways to to essentially to find a function that represents basically the instantaneous of velocity of the ball at every point in time and then this problem will be automatically taken care of okay but now what i could do is that basically now I could for these two points in time I could also essentially solve the problem in the following way as well meaning that I could say that meaning that I could say that basically I could say that that, that basically I'm going to calculate the this essentially this this um, expression for this particular situation right so i'm going to calculate v of a essentially considering the fact that that essentially f of t is equal to 4.9 times t squared right so how do i do that in this particular case f of basically a plus h i'm going to keep a as a meaning that I'm not going to substitute a with essentially any numbers so f of a plus h would be basically 4.9 times basically a plus h raised to the second power because the function is uh, f of t is equal to 4.9 times t squared substitute basically t with a plus h this becomes 4.9 times a plus h raised to the second power right and f of a well remains f of a so we don't have to do anything about that which means that basically then v of a would be essentially the limit of f of a plus h which is 4.9 times basically a plus h raised to the second power minus f of a over h as h approaches zero And, well, in this case, essentially, you can, of course, calculate f of a as well, meaning that f of a, you could call it basically 4.9 times basically times a squared. 4.9 times a squared, you could, you could do that so that it becomes essentially much easier. So that's 4.9 times a squared. Right? And then you can write this as... You could write this as the limit as h approaches zero 
and then this 4.9 you can take it out 4.9 and then uh, write it as a plus h whole squared minus a squared over h as h approaches zero right now this thing over here becomes a plus h whole squared minus a squared which is a squared plus two times a h plus h squared minus a squared so then you could cancel these two out you would have two a h plus h squared right and so i would i could write this as the limit as h approaches zero of 4.9 times basically 2ah plus h squared over h as h approaches 0. And this limit you could calculate it as basically as the limit of basically 4.9 times basically take an h out here and write it as 2 times a plus h over h as h approaches 0, right? And this h you can take out of this 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 pair of parentheses. You can write it as the limit of 4.9 times h times 2a plus h over h as h approaches 0. Then h and h you can cancel out. And write this as the limit of basically 4.9 times 2a plus h as h approaches 0, which becomes basically which becomes 2 times 4.9 times a. 2 times 4.9 times uh, times times a, which is the same thing as 4.9 times 2 is the same thing as 18.1, 8, uh, 9, 8, 9 8.8, so that's 9.8 times a. So that means that... Um, that means that basically V of A is equal to 9.8 times A. Is equal to 9.8 times A, right? Now that basically, now that you know essentially what is, what is V of A, you can basically, you can substitute A in this formula very easily, and then you don't have to basically you don't have to essentially calculate the same limit over and over again. Meaning that basically we wanted to find, for example, V of 5, right? So now what is V of 5? V of 5 would be basically 9.8 times 5, which would be the same thing as 9.8 times 5 would be 44, 45, 49. That's a 49, for example, meters per second, right? The same thing that we have over here or for example when the when the stone hits the ground the uh, the basically the the, um, the 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 relationship was f s is equal to f of t is equal to basically 4.9 times t squared and so when it hits the ground s becomes 450 is equal to 4.9 times t squared, which means that t squared is equal to 450 divided by 4.9, which means that t is equal to the square root of 450 over basically 4.9, right? And uh, so then if I want to now calculate, for example, this, when the, when the stone hits the ground, what is the velocity? I can write V of basically the square root of 450 over basically 4.9 is the same thing as, well, uh, 9.8 times basically the square root of 450 divided by 4.9, which would be basically, which you could calculate using the calculator very easily. <coughs> So you have 9.8 times the square root of, for example, 450 divided by 4.9. That gives you 94, for example, meters per second. That gives you 94 
approximately 94 meters per second right so you can see that in st if if you have essentially if you come across this type of situation where you want to basically calculate the average velocity instantaneous velocity a couple of times for a couple of different points in time you can calculate your instantaneous velocity function once and then use the same function over and over again in order to calculate the instantaneous velocity for different points in time right okay so i talked too much now the next concept that that we have here is the derivative um, and so in the next video we will talk about the derivative thank you